Good evening and welcome to day three of the 43rd annual Toronto International Film Festival. My name is Natalia Hunter-Young and I'm part of the festival programming team here at TIFF and it is my pleasure, my great pleasure, to introduce for you the North, Amer North American premiere screenings of Rafiki directed by Wanuri Kayu. To begin, we would like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the New Credit and the traditional to territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are grateful for the opportunity to work in the community and to the original keepers of this land for hosting us today and every day. As a part of TIFF's commitment to engaging youth in the festival's programming, our TIFF Next Wave Committee selected this film for the next generation of movie lovers. <laughs> yes. And the TIFF Next Wave Committee is supported by the Slate Found Family Foundation Learning Fund. Please note that this film is eligible for the Girls People's Choice Awards. And you can vote for the film at tiff.net slash vote. And we would like to thank Film Movement and MPM Premium for providing us with the film. Wanyuri Kayu was born in Nairobi and studied directing at UCLA's School of Theater, Film, and Television. Her films include the shorts Rastar, Pumzi, and the feature From a Whisper, and of course tonight's Rafiki. Following the screening, we will have a brief Q&A with the director, but first, please welcome, join me in welcoming Wanyuri Kayu to say a few words. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, <laughs> I keep saying how nervous I was that nobody would show up, and it's always so good <laughs> to come in and see faces. Yay! <laughs> um, we, we're so glad to be able to present this film to you. Um, as you may or may not know, this film is banned in Kenya, but that doesn't mean it doesn't travel around the world and it's not in, and seen by different audiences. Um, and we're so proud that it is because I think that being able to reflect Kenya in this way, in a loving, beautiful, feminine way, really is the best thing that I can do for my country. And, um, and I'm just so glad that uh, for a little moment, hopefully you get to fall in love with the people that I love and the place that I love most. Enjoy it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, can you talk about your casting process? Yeah. How that, how that, yeah. Um, so Sheila, who, Ziki with the pink hair, um, she came in for an audition um, and, and she was just so bubbly and light and she was just so full of life and it was so exciting to meet her. And um, she had done some TV before, but she'd never been a lead. And um, it took her a moment to kind of consider whether or not she was going to take the, the role, because it was it was this role, you know, and she did, she wasn't sure if the, her her first like major film role as this person what would it, what it would mean for her, what it would mean for her career, but I think she just like she just she embodied it and she just did it so well, and then Sam I kind of stalked. Because I, I saw her at a party and I was just like, oh my gosh, that is Kenna. And I, you know, it hadn't occurred to me what Kenna looked like until I saw Sam and I was just like, you. <laughs> you know? But it was really, also I just kind of like stood around her, I listened to her speak. <laughs> but I, did, I, I honestly didn't even have like the courage to ask for her phone number. So I asked a friend <laughs> to get her number. Like it was so, like it was like dating. I'm like, I'm like 38, you know what I mean? It's not like... It was silly, but, um, and then she came in for an audition and she just nailed it. And really just because she was present, she didn't force it. She was just so natural and present um, in that moment. And she was, she's such a natural actress. She's never done a lick. She's no, nothing, nothing, not she's drama. Musician, right? She's a music. she's a drama. Um, so she's never done anything like this, but, um, but then she just, she just nailed it. Um, and, and yeah, she's, now both of them are like traveling with the film everywhere. So it's such a great, it's such a great thing, I feel, 
for them to be part of it, but then for them to, to go off into like places that they've never been, like, you know, like in the film, like yeah. places they've never seen a Kenyan before, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, and, 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 and that's what they're doing with the film now. And it's, and it's, it's so thrilling and exciting. I know there's gotta be questions in the audience, so we'll give it a shot. Yeah, go ahead. So the question is about the reasoning behind not having the gay male character in the film speak. I think we just wanted his presence. His presence was the most important thing. Um, and when he sat with her, there was just such solidarity that there wasn't any need for words. And any words I felt would have been like so on the nose and so cheesy that it, it wasn't necessary. I mean, you know, um, because we we saw him go through everything, and and we saw the distance of you know the awkwardness between them. Like Kenna wouldn't like associate with him in a, in a certain way, but when they sat together, and it was just like I get it, I get, and that's all we wanted. We we're just like we're in it. I understand. This is how it is. You know what I mean? Um, and and it, I felt like the silence was already so loaded; it didn't need any words. We have time for two questions. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. yeah. Question is about production design. That's thank you. Um, so one of the things that I did was reference artists over um, anything else when we were creating the the production design. So the three artists that we referenced were Micheline Thomas. So, <laughs> and in and I wanted that contrast in the the colors and the whatever, and we we use that to to design Kenna's mother's house, and the so there's times where she's just like her hair, watch her hair, whatever she's wearing on her hair or her, her jersey, everything was like clashing, but that's because we wanted that feeling of like clashing, but it was completely inspired by Micheline Thomas, and then in I don't know, I mean, I, if you do, you you do, if you don't, cool, but you should. But um, in Ziki's room, there's a Wangeshi Mutu. Thank you, sis. So there's a Wangeshi, there's a Wangeshi Mutu in that space, and and then we designed. We got like, she gave us a, a copy. You know what I mean? It was just like I remember seeing the Wangeshi Mutu uh, copy, not even the original, a copy when we got it. And I was, I started crying just looking at the painting, and then we designed the room around that. Um, and then the other person that we referred to was Zanele because um, she just she just she's she's a lesbian uh, photographer South in Africa. South Africa oh, she's just amazing and her photography and her stillness and the way she just captures people is just studied here in Toronto at Ryerson University <laughs> <laughs> she's great <laughs> um, and and um, so we want I wanted to reference three women who've influenced my life as an as artists so we used um, those artists to kind of influence the way we see the film as well. One more. Yes, go ahead in the jean jacket. Um, what were your interactions with So the question is about uh, Kenyans getting to see the film. So at the moment, the film is banned, and that means it cannot be. Um, exhibited, distributed, broadcast, or possessed within the Republic of Kenya, nor the poster, because the poster is also super dodge, according to the <laughs> according to the government. Um, so um, it's 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 hard because uh, I could get arrested if it is seen, um, which is not so cool. I want to do other things, you know what I mean? Um, and, um, but I, I truly believe that this, this uh, banning has happened. It's happened in, in many times in our history, in Kenyan history, it's happened in Africans history. Um, but that doesn't mean that art doesn't come back from exile. And I truly believe that this is one of the pieces that will come back from exile at one point. Um, but also, uh, we, we're definitely thinking about, we're pushing back, um, because it's our right as artists. Um, freedom of expression is our right, and it's our constitutional right. So we are going to be mounting a case against the, the government and the Kenya Film Classification Board to say, this is our right and this is, you know. 
Um, so that's that's about to happen, um, and 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 I feel that it's incredibly important um, for nobody to, to for not to allow people to stifle voices. And I think for me, what the most hurtful thing, apart from the patriarchy that I encountered as a result of making the film, like the absolute hardcore patriarchy, which I was just like, yeah, patriarchy. And then you see it and it's just like, oh, I see your ugly evil face. You know what I mean? Um, apart from that, it was just trying to make it as if people don't exist. Denying the existence of people is like the most damaging thing you can do to a human being, to a human spirit, to a human soul, to our, to our ethos as why we live. Like it's just, it's the most damaging thing. So trying, people saying that these people do not exist, there is no such thing is, is a travesty, especially when we know for a fact that we have had queer community since the beginning of time. And it's that's why we have language, that's why we have words for it in, in different African languages. That's why we have cultures and traditions that, that are about same-sex relations. It's, it's not unknown. What is unknown is the very current colonial laws that have stopped um, carnal knowledge against the order of nature, however they want, however they want to define that. Um, and what we know is absurd is, um, is the denial of existence. Homophobia, I think, is what is un-African, not, um, not the opposite. Um, and so, um, yeah, so we're, we just, yeah. Yeah. You're doing the things. Yeah, we're doing, we're pushing back. Yeah. And it is going to be seen in Kenya because we're going to make sure it is seen in Kenya at some point. But we're going to do it the right way. We're going to push back. And then we're Tanzania, push the and then Uganda. And, uh, <laughs> 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 one more time, yeah. please give one Eric Kayo a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing this film to oh, TIFF. Oh, man, thanks for having Please me. Please remember to vote, tiff.net slash vote. <laughs>